over 13 billion kilometers from home, the most distant thing ever seen to orbit the sun, another small icy world called Sedna, discovered in 2003. Its orbit takes 10,000 years and sends it 130 billion kilometers from the sun. Hang on, there's something else out here. 16 billion kilometers from home, the space probe Voyager 1. If it wasn't for this bundle of aluminium and antennae, we'd have no images of the giant planets, no clue about their strange moons. It's traveling 20 times faster than a bullet, sending messages home. And look, on its side, that gold panel, a kind of intergalactic message in a bottle. There's a greeting recorded in different languages. And a map showing how to find our solar system. But if you're in the jungle, is it wise to call out? Anyone, anything could hear our call, find out where we live and come knocking, friendly or not. A cloud of cosmic icebergs stretching for what seems like forever. They look like the comet we saw earlier. Maybe it started life out here, until something dislodged it, sending it towards the sun, just like the comets that may have planted life on Earth billions of years ago. And seeing all this ice, maybe they carried water to Earth too. It's an astonishing thought. The water in the oceans, in your coffee, even in your body, all from this distant celestial ice machine. We're eight million, million, that's eight trillion kilometers from home. But in reality, this is only a baby step. Ahead, trillions of kilometers, billions of stars. This is it. Time to stop looking in and start looking out. To step out into the big wide universe. Into interstellar space. Interstellar space, far beyond our solar system. What of you? Billions of stars like our own sun, many with planets, many of those with moons. It's hard to know which way to go. There are infinite possibilities in every direction. Whichever way, we're going to need a serious burst of acceleration. Forty trillion kilometers from home. A hundred and fifty thousand year ride in a space shuttle. And we've only just reached the first solar system after our own. Alpha Centauri. Not one, but three stars. They're spinning around each other, locked in a celestial standoff. Each star's gravity attracting the other. Their insane orbital speed keeping them apart. Get between them, and we could be flung into the face of one of these stars. Vaporized, trillions of kilometers from home. So far, the kilometers are becoming meaningless. We're going to have to talk in light years. 
A beam of light takes one year to travel 10 trillion kilometers. So 40 trillion kilometers is four light years from home. It's crazy. Distances so vast, they're almost beyond comprehension. And exciting. Who knows what strange worlds lie ahead? What we'll discover when, if we reach the edge of the universe. Ten light years from Earth, the star Epsilon Eridani. What spectacular rings of dust and ice, and somewhere in there, planets forming out of the debris, being born before our eyes. Asteroids and comets everywhere. We could almost be looking at our own solar system billions of years ago, with comets delivering organic molecules, water to these young planets, kick-starting life just as they may have done on Earth. At the center of all this action, a star smaller than our sun. It's still in its infancy. Any life in this solar system would be primitive at best. There must be more mature, developed solar systems out here. But finding them is like looking for a needle in a cosmic haystack. Twenty light years from Earth. Star Gliese 581. It's about the same age as our sun. And orbiting it, this planet. It's just the right distance from its sun. Any closer and water would boil away. Any further and it would freeze. Ideal conditions for life to have evolved. And if comets have struck, delivering water and organic materials, then life, complex beings like us, even civilizations like our own, could be down there, right now. And if there are, even at this distance, they could be tuning into our TV signals, watching shows from 20 years ago. And here's your host, Joe Dutton. But until future generations can find a way of communicating over these vast distances, all we can do is speculate. Us and them, living parallel lives, unaware of each other's existence. Unless life has been and gone. That's the problem with comets. They're creators and destroyers. As the dinosaurs found out the hard way 65 million years ago. This is the needle in the cosmic haystack. The closest we've come to a habitable solar system like our own. But it's a chance encounter. There could be hundreds, millions more solar systems like this out here. Or none at all. This is vast, and look, it's the planet Bella 